Good morning. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. Okay, so far on YouTube, I have been somehow inundated with all of these videos about the company that I used to work for, and I'm like, oh my God, it's a little bit triggering. Some people have asked me to talk about this company I used to work for. It was a very, very toxic environment. I don't know. I'm just not in a place. I just need, I don't know. I just, if more people come to me and ask me for my story and to share stuff, maybe I will, but it's just a lot. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why is this being recommended to me? I have like purposely <laughs> been avoiding <laughs> any and all discussion, but somehow people, it just keeps coming to me and people want my opinions and stuff. And I don't know. And somebody asked me to make a video about it. <sighs> I don't know. If you know me in real life in the past four years, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But then this face came on my little feed and I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you. Like, let's remove me from my trauma, please. Thank you. <laughs> and let's look at something. So I watched like the first five seconds of this and I was like, let's make a reaction video. Let's make a reaction video. So let's have some fun this Sunday. Folks, for the weekend. Irrelevant news. So the Hold up. Let's calm down with the speed. A subway worker recently shared video of himself doing this to the store's food. Uh, is this really necessary? Bro. He's putting what are his you whole foot in the bins where... The toppings for the sandwiches are. Yo. Wow. Cloud chasing is a disease. Cloud chasing is a diagnostical disease. What are you Looks doing? Like he really wanted to add some spice to it. I guess that's what Subway means when they say eat fresh. I cannot, I cannot believe he actually put that in people's food if he did disgusting but i just like whether he put it on people's food whether it was like oh well the store is closing and this is just like the leftovers he was gonna throw it out anyway whatever it was clout chasing is a disease please get medication fresh but that wasn't the only thing that that mm, subway employee gross. did to the food folks in fact oh, really? he got a whole bunch of cold cuts and he lined a toilet seat with it and needless to say dude. that his efforts resulted in a very green carnage now, dude this reminds me of back when the panorama was first happening and people were licking toilet seats like in the airplane ew like what is what is wrong what is wrong <laughs> Folks, everybody can have their own preferences as far as food mm. goes, but if you're the type of person who continued eating Subway after it was exposed that they were using the same chemical that could be found in yoga mats in their bread, then you're probably not surprised by anything <laughs> this employee fresh, did. That's oh, by the way, in case fresh. you're wondering, that employee did get fired. <laughs> anyway, folks, Hooters recently oh. changed their uniform, and uh, yeah. a lot of the employees are not very happy with the changes. Uh, they're pointing out how the shorts that they now have to wear at the restaurant yeah, are way now. more revealing. In fact, it appears that Hooters... I kind of, I kind of don't think these employees are upset. Like, how can you be upset? You work at Hooters. You're, you know your job. You are pushing your breasts to says to show as much cleavage as, as possible. And the original shorts were showing, you know, a little bit of ass cheeks. So I don't think they're actually upset. I think it's just like it's shocking. It's like it's shocking. Like, what were you just gonna go whole ass? But like, I don't. You know what the job is. Hooters is going with clothing that is uh, as close as you will possibly get to something that women would probably wear at the beach. Oh, hold on a minute, folks. It sounds like we are getting an update on this story. And uh, Hooters just once again changed their uniform. Now they're demanding that all of their servers be completely nude. In fact, they're becoming a strip I mean, club. you might as well just... See that one <laughs> like, Not at all serious, like, folks. Is revenue well. at Hooters tanking so much that the only way they can bring in money is... But yo, those Daytona... These, the Daytona wings... You just... I ordered to go. I ordered to go. Listen, I am a wings fanatic. 
if you sell french fries or wings i must i must try them i must and when i first heard about hooters i was like ew but then someone's like no the wings are actually really good the wings are actually really good i'm like okay so i looked at the description of their wings and the detona wings are like literally exactly the type of wings I've been looking for an establishment to sell like my whole life. It's like pan seared, like pre marinated and pan seared wings. Like, you know, that's very rare because usually they'll just bake them and then toss and then pour sauce on it and, and call it a day. That's what restaurants typically do. That's the, the no, no ma'am. But you pre marinated these wings, they're pan seared. And it's like, okay, maybe people really do be going to Hooters for the wings and the view. By upping the over-sexualization of their already over-sexualized servers. I guess that's what happens when your entire business model consists of serving trash food and uh, eye candy for incels. And in Well, I wonder what it's like to work there. I wonder. I had a friend, he was like, you could work at Hooters. And I'm like, but my boobies are small. And he's like, no, it's not just about your boobs. It's also about your your ass and i was like oh really oh what's it like it's kind of nerve-wracking like what if you i've heard stories of like you know like it's kind of like at a gentleman's club you could do extras well you're not supposed to do extras but you could do extras and you know you you kind of you're trying to get that money you're trying to get the bag you're trying to please your client and I've heard stories of Hooters girls who, you know, they get in those kind of situations because it's like, this is somebody who they always come, they always tip, and I don't want to make them mad. And that's a, this is a problem with, like, these industries where it's young women who are, you know, using their body to cater to mostly men for their coin because... Because you don't have like it can be very you can be in situations that situations that weren't that weren't in the handbook, like the situations weren't in the handbook. Like you really don't know what you're doing. You 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 really don't know what to expect. But then also I just know I've heard stories of girls who just work at Hooters and they just work there and you know and you get you know your occasional really nice tip like you know a little bit more tip than what you would get at a regular restaurant and you just keep it pushing so i don't know but i also knew that i would just i just felt like i would be so embarrassed if somebody who knew me and knew my family happened to walk into this establishment oh oh, oh god in other news a tiktoker recently exposed jack black for something extremely unusual knowing this part will never apply to me because jack black helped pay for my first house by buying my entire stock of long furbies i have so many questions first off jack black is into furbies second jack black is into long furbies a third I didn't even he bought an entire stock of long furbies fourth what the hell is he going to do with an entire stock of long furbies what did jack black do with that many long furbies the quantity ended up being an accident and we got it all sorted out but okay. he does have two. <laughs> oh, thank goodness it's just two long <laughs> furbies folks because you I know if know it was actually was an thing. entire stock of long furbies instead of just two it would mean absolutely nothing different <laughs> now folks this has to be the most unusual thing That's that i've funny. ever witnessed a public figure get exposed for and it is and that's a funny thing for jack black to be in the news about also coincidentally <laughs> the most wholesome if only every scandal could be about long furbies but guess what folks it unfortunately is not because adele had the gall to get into beef with peppa pig am i gonna collab with peppa pig no how could not. anybody in their right minds yeah. turn down <laughs> peppa pig does Adele not understand really just who Peppa is? Peppa, what vegetable have you drawn? <laughs> My daddy watching television. Adele should know that you don't mess with Peppa, folks. She Yo, is it true? I heard that Peppa Pig is banned in China because Peppa Pig promotes uh, promotes 
um, disorderly conduct and uh, disrespect. Is it true? <laughs> Runs these streets. And Peppa made sure to let Adele know by responding on Twitter with a gift that alludes to Adele's lyrics. But unfortunately for Peppa, Adele ghosted her. That is until this happened. Hello, Hello Adele. Is so pretty. That made me really, really sad when you said you wouldn't collaborate with. Yo, who is the voice actor for Peppa Pig? Pay that child over time. Me? <laughs> Why not? Don't you like me? Caught in 4K in a manner that only the queen of the internet herself, Peppa Pig, can do. Is that the real nowadays Peppa? Yes. yes. Real Peppa. 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 Peppa, that ain't the one of you I know. That's not the same voice as the one that I grew up with my son. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. Hey Adele. You're not really making a case Yo, for yourself you right roasting now. You know, Peppa? Peppa's Peppa's gonna roast livid. you back. But Peppa, I, 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 oh yeah, I've already said today, I regret it. I regret it. I spent three years watching you. <laughs> 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 I do really regret it. And anytime you want to go jumping in muddy puddles and singing muddy puddles, I'm with you, babes. <laughs> <laughs> I felt terrible the second I said it. Well, Adele, why don't you have your team contact Peppa's team to see if she's available to collab with you because, you know, she's kind of busy. And speaking of being busy, Takashi 6 9 is going to be busy for a while trying to get get his Spotify account back because it was recently hacked and the hackers changed the 6 ix profile picture to a picture of his arch nemesis, Trippy Red, and wrote this in 6 ix bio. I grew up always wanting to be like Trippy Red and Lil Dark. <laughs> what my girl that? and my mom. My mom pussy sank, I came from the sewer. Whack 100, my boyfriend, and he secretly crip. By the way, whoever hacked 6 9 went as far as to change one of his images into an animorphs where he really morphs into a rat. Perfection! And in other news, <laughs> Addison Ray was recently permanently suspended on TikTok. Well, time eh? to get a job. I don't think Addison understands that being what able happened? to dance with your arms isn't a skill that most employers are looking for. Anyway, Addison included the following Renegade. image with Renegade. her tweet that said, Your account was permanently banned due to multiple violations of our community guidelines. And the responses to Addison's tweet sharing this information were very broad, with only fans sharing a pair oh. of eyes. Now, there were only a lot fans. of comments Excuse under that tweet you. requesting that Addison Ray start on OnlyFans. However, folks, I, uh, with the Netflix deal that she has, I think that it's gonna be a hard ask. Addison, I have a job for you. I can hire you to ratio others for my account. That is so kind of quackity to just offer Addison a job like that at a low point Why would she like ban this. Though? Especially a job as fun as ratioing people on Twitter. Anyway, folks, it's interesting that this happened to Addison because this is an actual real issue on TikTok right now. People mm. will coordinate brigading campaigns where they mass mm. report numerous posts from a creator. And what ends up happening is- Not surprised. She gets a lot of hate for being unremarkable um <laughs> um but girl she's gonna be fine she she used the platform the way you're supposed to you're not supposed to stay on the platform if you are trying to become rich and famous you're not supposed to get popular on a platform and just stay there you're supposed to use it to launch into like actual gigs like launch your career um liza koshi did it right that's why you don't see liza koshi out here doing uh three four five fake apologies <laughs> because she you know, you use this stuff to launch your actual LA career. You get a community guidelines violation because of the report. And even after the video gets appealed, reviewed, and cleared by TikTok, the community guidelines violation never goes away. The video may be yeah, reinstated, but it's still there. And what happens is over time, these accumulate and uh, they end up costing certain creators their accounts. I mean, I saw a creator just a couple of weeks ago with over 5 million followers who completely lost his account, even though every single community guidelines violation had been overturned. Wow. It's pretty insane. It's as though you get a strike on YouTube, YouTube reverses the strike, but the strike still stays in your account. It's just completely bonkers what they have going mm -hmm. on over there and i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people started complaining because it's clearly oh, starting no, to people have been complaining um yo people have been tiktok is like people have been complaining about tiktok since the inception of tiktok like i, I don't know when is this company gonna get these the shits together i don't know affect their bigger creators you can only imagine how it's affecting the smaller creators anyway folks the amazon show i know what you did last summer made a very surprising mention of a certain somebody in their most recent season do not die 
I mean it. I will have a literal Trisha Paytas breakdown if you do. Amazon should expect a letter from <laughs> Trisha's lawyer soon be because I'm pretty sure that they've got those breakdowns trademarked. Anyway, folks, James Charles recently did a Q&A on his channel and a few of the answers he gave are going to surprise you. I definitely think the beauty community has like the social media world knows it, is nothing like it once was. I mean, there's been so much drama, so many cancellations, so many different people taking a step away, and I frankly have been one of them. I don't blame anybody. You know, folks, every time I hear James Charles describe his uh, moment away from the internet as a much-needed break, it kind of reminds me of- We <laughs> were on a break! Was he, though? Was he <laughs> on a break? Myself and my team were working on a really fun podcast. It was a super cool concept. This was a full like ready to go project and then i ended up taking a break from social media for quite a while i am so confused folks yeah james charles has decided that he will no longer be taking accountability okay he has decided he will no longer stress himself out with having to think about wrongdoings he has decided to just play because James Charles sees the game. Okay. He has now seen the game. He sees how once you have a following, you can't get canceled unless you cancel yourself. He he sees the game. You you can't get if you just don't acknowledge, then you, you what what like what's the worst that's gonna happen? You're gonna have people in your comments talking about, oh you monster, oh this, oh this, why didn't you this you need to address this, this, this. But you have so many fans that your fans are gonna drown it out. You can just block Hiana. Like <laughs> James Charles sees how people just come back. He seen he peeped Jeffree Star, he peeped Trisha Paytas, he peeped, he peeped David Dobrik. Like he's peeping and he's realizing if you are big on YouTube, you don't actually need to be canceled. Like yeah, people can call for you to be canceled. You don't actually have to like you don't have to. Like <laughs> That's what James Charles said. Listen, we're never going to hear him address um him saying that he's a woman on dating apps so that he can talk to straight men. Um, he's not going to, those days are over. The days of him trying to explain what have you, hoo hoo boo boo, they're over. Folks, was it a much needed time away or was he on a break? It just feels like there's some other reason why James Charles had to leave the internet, which was not necessarily on his accord. I can't quite bring myself to remember it though. After all, it's only been about five months and memory on the internet is quite literally non-existent. In fact, I've already forgotten what I just said. I Especially if you just choose to ignore it. I feel like the one lesson that I have really learned while growing up that I wish that I could go back in time and tell my younger self would be, you don't have to act out and be dramatic and start fights and do crazy things for attention and for people to like you. I don't know about you folks, but I find it rather unusual that this is the lesson that James Charles learned considering his <laughs> last year. But at the end of the day, folks, I'm clearly not James Charles uh, to dictate He's not gonna tell, girl, the days are over. I'm telling you, like, Trisha Paytas was the last one. The days of these big YouTubers actually even attempting to take accountability is over. Lesson is most important to him. I think that in the beginning of my, not even the beginning of my career, all throughout middle school and high school and then the beginning of my career, you know, I was definitely focused on like, what can I do or say that would be shocking or slightly offensive or funny to get like, attention oh i see now he's addressing all the controversial statements that he made at the beginning of his career this has to be the weirdest addressing the situation without addressing anything at all scenario that i've seen in a while it's a rhetorical technique initially created by nikita dragon i wish that i had just focused more on myself my personality and my talent and maybe deleting snapchat off your phone that would have probably helped you a lot too and now a palate cleanser all right so that was the tea for this sunday at least the uh a certain section of YouTube tea for this Sunday. What did you think? Oh, also, I finished season three of you. I finished it. Can, can I talk about you? Can I talk about you? Okay, let, let's, let's, let's just do a little chit chat about you.
just real, just real good. <laughs> okay, I just, this was my favorite season because this season, Joe and Love are, you know, married. They have a baby and they live in this super, like, mm, this rich neighborhood full of people who just act fake and are online mom influencers and it's like a very interesting scenario to put these two particular people in it's a very interesting scenario and the results of it is what i really loved about this season was that the characters were so i don't know the characters were just so dynamic like it's like a roller coaster one minute you feel like you're on love and Joe's side. The next you're like, oh my gosh, I you people need to go to prison forever. Uh, gosh, there was just there was just so much, like just so much. One thing I really loved because you know at the end of season two, you're just like Joe, you idiot. This woman is perfect for you. Like you this is the woman you need and then there's a moment in season three where they um get therapy and you're you just feel so excited like oh my gosh like oh my gosh they're so they're perfect together and maybe they can like you know keep keep getting the mental health treatment that they need and you know, just for a moment, just for an episode, you're like, oh, just feeling the love. And then it's like, never mind. Y'all get whatever the hell happens to <laughs> whatever the hell happens, y'all deserve. But um, you know, but and you feel that way so much with so many of the characters. One minute you're like, oh, I like that character, the next you're like, oh my gosh. One minute you're like, I hate that character. The next you're like, oh my God, I love this character. I'm rooting for them. It's just so much fun. And they touch on these topics like that are so important in life. You know, they talk, they talk about family. How do families work? How do, how, what's the reality of marriage? What's the reality of parenthood? You know, um, you know, like what's the reality of friendships or friendships? Like, these concepts that are, are really important, family, parenthood, marriage, friendships, these things are so important and we don't talk about them a lot. And especially media doesn't, <clears throat> doesn't like explore all of these things often, right? Media will explore when you're falling in love Media will explore uh, arch nemeses, but these concepts that you live in your everyday life, you don't see so much like just in a show that you're enjoying, media displaying and exploring. That's what I love the most about this season is that this season is really literally exploring what does it mean to be a good parent? What is this relationship, child, parent? What is it? What are we doing? What is this re relationship, husband, wife? What are we, what are we literally doing? You know, or husband and husband or wife and wife. You, like, what are we doing? you know, and I just, I just love that because it's just so rare. It's so needed. It's a part of your everyday life. And it's just so cool to watch it in ex just the extreme circumstances that the characters in you take it to. So I love this season. This was my favorite season. And I highly recommend if you're looking for something to watch, Honestly, I kind of feel I kind of feel like you don't even need to see the first se the first two seasons for season three. Yeah, I look you feel like you don't you don't even need to see the first you don't even need to see the first two seasons. They don't 
they don't allude to a lot. Like literally if if you just watch a season one, season two recap or, you know, just understand the concept that Joe and Love are murderers, <laughs> that that's enough. Like I love this season. Like this season can stand alone to me. So, okay. Um, thanks for watching uh, and chilling with me this Sunday morning. I don't think I'm going to edit this one. I was thinking, uh, I have to put this into iMovie so I can put my intro song. And I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling like doing that right now. So <laughs> I'm just going to upload it as is. If you vibe with me, then I've been talking for 25 minutes. If you vibe with me, then do. Um, I'm like, yeah, I was just triggered this morning because just somehow all these videos about where I used to work just kept popping up. And it's something I would like to talk about one day, but not yet. Not, it's just, it's just not time to really talk about it. Like make a whole dedicated video or series about it. Not yet, but maybe one day. I just had to get my mind off of it because as much as much as I've been working on myself in therapy and working with my mental health and all that stuff, as much progress as I've made, you you can still get you can still get triggered. And those of you who watched my video on Belle Aubrey, who was literally trying to deplatform Eugenia Cooney because Eugenia Cooney triggers her. Um, like, here's what I did for those who feel like Bell Aubrey was onto something. Here's what I did because this, this, these, this certain organization triggers me, right? And what I had been doing is just ignoring, like not going to videos related to that company, just not going to those videos. And then it popped up and I watched it and realized now this still triggers me. So I click not, no, I'm not interested <laughs> so that it will stop coming up on my feed and, the, and then move and move on. Like, yo, like this is like, this is life. You know, like if you have mental health triggers, you need to be prepared. You need, that's why you go to therapy. So you can be prepared because in life, those triggers are going to be there. Like, like you can't stop other people from living. You can't stop the world from turning because of your trauma. You can't do that. That's not reasonable. And that's not right. That's not ethical either. So what do you do? You do what's best for you. You do what's best for you. You don't make try to make people do what's best for you because of your trauma. You do what's best for you. Because, you know, other people are also going to live. Other people got to live. Other people exist. And that's all I got to say. I'm going to hop off. I'm going to actually clean my room. I'm so happy. I made progress. I cleaned the bathroom cleaning up the living room. I set up a little dining area. I mean, this place is a little bit coming together, just a little bit. But at least it doesn't look like absolute dumpster fire. So I'm going to finish that so I can have a good week next week. I'm going on a trip. I'm super nervous about this trip. Because I'm basically, I'm, it's another trigger that I'm getting over that I'm going to be confronting on this trip. We're going to be meditating. Until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out.